Now, amid reports of factional fight between Afghan Taliban and Pakistan-controlled terror units, hundreds of Afghans have protested against Pakistan and its puppet Taliban. The protest has assembled outside the Pak embassy in Kabul. In fact, protesters, including women, were seen chanting slogans and holding banners against Islamabad and the Taliban. Protesters raised slogans for Azadi or freedom. They chanted slogans like death to Pakistan, Pakistan down, down. Now, these protesters were marching towards Kabul Serena Hotel, where the Pakistan ISI director has been staying since quite some time now, since at least a week he's been lodged there. As the demonstrations intensified, the Taliban fired shots in the air to disperse assembled crowds. Journalists who were covering the protests were arrested by the Taliban. On Saturday, the chief of Pakistan's intelligence agency, ISI, landed in Kabul to help in Taliban's offensive against Panjshir and iron out factional differences over government formation. Pakistan jets, choppers, drones are helping Taliban target the resistance movement and capture Panjshir at the earliest, which seems to be the last standing province. Now, let me cut across to Sneha Murdani, who spoke with... Uh, Afghan journalist Hikmatullah Ahmadzad on the latest situation in Kabul. Let's cut across. What is the situation like right now? The last time we spoke, the Taliban had fired shots in the air to disperse the crowds. Uh, but a lot of people have gathered outside the assembly. So is the situation all right right now? What more can you tell us? Yeah, thank you. Uh, as you know that uh, uh, Taliban uh, fired in the air just to disperse the uh, protest and also uh, the journalists uh, didn't allow to call and the Taliban didn't allow the journalists in government to call these protests and as yes, you know that uh, today this morning uh, hundreds of Afghan people men and women they came out in Kabul city the head of the city to protest against Pakistan and the chanting against Pakistan and said that Pakistan get out of Afghanistan <laughs> and these protests have been ongoing since last night also. Uh, is that correct? And how many people are there? The fear is that the Taliban is going to have some sort of a crackdown on all of these people who are now really exposing the role of Pakistan in all of this, isn't it? Yeah, uh, several protests happened from the last night in several provinces uh, like uh, Balkh, Ghazni, and others in space, especially in Kabul is still. And also right now in Ghor province, uh, women come out to the streets and they uh, started uh, protest just for their uh, human rights. Hmm. Now the Taliban regime is back in Afghanistan and so is its medieval mindset. Now it appears like it's curtains down for women's freedom there. Images from Kabul's Avicenna University show women being made to sit separately from their male counterparts. Several brave women took to streets there demanding equal rights. Here's our ground report. The good news. Colleges have opened in Afghanistan. The bad news. Taliban's repressive regime is on full display. The first visuals coming out of Afghanistan on the first day of studies at Kabul's Avicenna University were quite representative of what the future holds. Men and women students were separated with help of curtains. They are no longer allowed to sit together. This was when the Taliban vowed to treat women differently, despite a history of oppression. On Monday, a Taliban spokesperson took to Twitter and posted this video. Women can be seen holding the Taliban flag, sloganeering and demanding religious hijab and marching for the Islamic Emirate. The spokesperson Zabihullah Mujahid said, women are actually insisting to make hijab mandatory for everyone. A claim hard to digest given the protest taking place. Women have hit the streets of Kabul demanding equal rights and representation in the Taliban-led government. These brave women were confronted by armed militants and there are reports that they were tear-gassed. 
We just want the same rights as men or the same concessions that we had under the government of Ashraf Ghani. We want to have rights under the Taliban government also. If not at 100%, if not at 80%, then at least 50% should be given to us. Women say their only goal is to maintain some hard-won rights that they had before the Taliban takeover. The Islamic Emirate Authority announced that it will introduce a cabinet that under no circumstances will women be a part of it. When they said this, then of course, those of us who have studied, who have had an education, who have played a role in society, we fought back. We want women and men to always maintain their rights. It's not gender specific for us. For us, what matters is for everyone to have the right authority and rights. Taliban rule was marked by violent punishments and a ban on schooling or work for women and girls. Many Afghans and foreign governments fear a return of such practices. And the first signals coming out of Kabul are not very encouraging. Bureau Report, India Today. Now, turf war between Taliban and Pakistan-backed Haqqani network over government formation in Afghanistan. Of course, we're seeing that Pakistan is attempting hard to try and seat their proxies right there, only uh, to completely back and control Afghanistan with the Taliban's takeover. Let's take a look at this ground report. A mere 20 days after it ousted the elected government in Afghanistan, the Afghans are getting a teaser of what the future holds for them. All this happening when Taliban is still struggling to put a government together. At a time when all focus must be on putting the country in order, the Taliban is occupied in firefighting factional fights with Pakistan's ISI-backed Haqqani network. The Pakistan government, seeing an opportunity in crisis, is busy planting its proxies in the seat of power. Pakistan India today has learned that Pakistan's ISI has been pushing for Mullah Hassan Akund, the head of the Rehbari Shura, to lead the government. Akund is said to be close to ISI. But that is not all. The ISI is pushing for Shirajuddin Haqqani as Interior Minister and Mullah Yaqub to be the Defence Minister of the Taliban government. All with an aim to be in the driver's seat of the government in Afghanistan. So far, the Taliban appears to have succumbed to Haqqani Network's demands. The Taliban have already announced it's inviting Pakistan, China, Russia, Iran, Turkey and Qatar for the government formation. Pakistan clearly is trying to send out a message to the West that it is the handler of Taliban in Afghanistan. With Abhishek Bhalla in New Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Now it's the last stronghold of the resistance in Afghanistan. But is the fall of Panjshir now imminent? The Taliban claims complete control of the valley. In fact, fighters of the organization unfurled the Taliban flag as well at the governor's office in Panjshir and posed right under the portrait of Ahmad Masood. In fact, the resistance front, however, has rejected Taliban's claims, declaring the fight is still on. The battle for Panjshir is in its final stages. The last anti-Taliban bastion witnessing its probable endgame. This is the defining image of Taliban's claim of conquering Panjshir. Taliban fighters posing outside the governor's house in this outpost. 
even hoisting the Islamic Emirate flag at the governor's residence, trying to put a seal of approval on their victory claim. The Taliban also claimed to have captured more US-made Black Hawk helicopters, which were used by caretaker President Amrullah Saleh and Northern Alliance leader Ahmad Massoud. The Taliban claim they offered options for docks to the resistance forces which went unheeded. But resistance forces have denied the Taliban's claims, claiming that their fighters are still holding key positions high up in the Panjshir Mountains. Masood's spokesperson spoke to Turkish TRT World Channel minutes before the Taliban claimed that they had captured Panjshir. He said the resistance is still in an advantageous position. The Taliban claimed to have inflicted heavy casualties on resistance forces. Fahim Dashti, the spokesperson of the resistance force and key aide of Ahmad Masood, has reportedly been killed in the Panjshir battle. The Taliban blamed it on factional fighting in the resistance. In another blow to resistance forces, its chief commander, Saleh Mohammad, was also reportedly killed by the Taliban. Ahmad Masood's nephew, General Abdul Udud Zare, too was reportedly killed in Rokha district of Panjshir. He was involved in negotiations with the Taliban on the future of Afghanistan. Another of Masood's nephews, Munib Amiri, was also reportedly killed in a gunfight. As the battle intensified, resistance forces chief Ahmad Masood has been in Tajikistan for the last three days, while former Vice President Amrullah Saleh is still holding on in Panjshir at an undisclosed location and believed for now to be safe. His key aide told India today that he has not abandoned his people. With Hikmatullah Ahmad Zadi in Kabul, you report India Today. Now, incessant torrential rains has wreaked havoc in several parts of Uttarakhand. We're looking at heavy rainfall that's increased water levels in the Chamboli River. In fact, heavy downpour has caused water levels to rise to above the danger level mark. With overflowing rivulets inundating the Badrinath National Highway 58, traffic on the arterial route has now come to a complete halt. In fact, in Rudraprayag, heavy rains have triggered landslides, forcing the closure of the Badrinath Highway at multiple points, including Shivanandi, Narkota and Sirogbad. In fact, the overflowing Alaknanda River also has submerged the 15 feet Shiv idol with the Badrinath Highway blocked. Those travelling towards Rishikesh and Dehradun have now been stranded. Efforts are on currently to clear the highway. There have also hampered traffic. In fact, it's come to a complete standstill in those areas. To add to the woes of travellers, an alternative route on Dehradun, Rani Pokhari, Rishikesh Highway has now been created only to facilitate ease of movement of people as well as small vehicles there unfortunately have been swept away due to heavy rains last night. The route was created after parts of a bridge over Jakan River collapsed on August 27th. Meanwhile, we're looking at severe landslides along the Simla Kinor Highway. It has uh, resulted in quite some chaos where the district administration has now swung into action. Those roads are currently being cleared. Let's take a quick ground look. A massive sheet of land slipped down the mountain onto the Shimla Kinor Highway on Monday morning. Huge boulders came crashing down, forming a massive cloud of dust on the highway. Videos that have gone viral showing stunned travellers and security men shell-shocked and then running for their lives. The National Highway at Jyori in Himachal Pradesh was blocked for hours holding up traffic on the key road. Landslides are becoming the norm in the hills of North India. On 30th July, a landslip struck Sirmore in Himachal Pradesh, leaving a long stretch of road heavily damaged. 
A series of landslides have occurred in Himachal and Uttarakhand in June and July, exposing the environmental fragility of the hills because of climate change. Bureau Report, India Today. And now we're seeing heavy rains. It's also lashed many parts of Telangana, resulting in two people being washed away in those flash floods. In fact, in total, we're looking at at least three people who've lost their lives. These horrific images, though, show two people getting washed away in the flash floods in Sirsila district. At least three of them have died in rain-related incidents across the state. Many people have been rescued from low-lying areas. Normal life has come to a complete halt in Varangal, Karim Nagar, Bhopal Palli, among several other areas that have now witnessed downpour that's battered their vicinity. In fact, the rains continue today as well. Rains inundated several colonies. Roads as well completely damaged. Standing crops destroyed. The administration has now declared holiday for all government and private schools today in several flood-affected districts of Telangana. Due to the deluge now, Congress MLA Sitakka has inspected the rain-affected areas in Varangal district in a car. Meanwhile, the IMD has now predicted more rains in Telangana in the coming days. In fact, the weather department has further said that thunderstorm accompanied with lightning is very likely at isolated areas today.